Hello traders, it is Friday, September 11th, 2020, and it's Rod with Power Group coming at you with another daily market recap. And it's gonna be a daily, uh, or sorry, a weekly Friday tradition, but uh, had another great day today. I hope you guys had an awesome day. Consider liking the video if you enjoy this market uh, perspective and subscribe to the channel if you're notified on any updates. I'm gonna have a Molo, a Hexo Molo. I'm absolutely addicted to these things. If you haven't tried them yet, give them a try for sure. And in the, today's video, we're going to discuss QQQ and SPY and the sell-off in the market today and where we're going, what, why this happened, and the daily downtrend confirmed on those two sectors. And uh, I also want to do a $100 giveaway. I've had back-to-back-to-back-to-back uh, to back to back to back great Great days. I think I must have uh, made about 10 trades today and I, I didn't have a single losing one. Uh, I think I had one bad trade at the last like three weeks. So um, I want to pay it forward and I'm going to do a $100 giveaway. So before we get started with uh, the content, in order to qualify for the $100, um, it's going to be Canadian dollars. So just comment on the video below. So leave in the comments, just comment anything. Um, I'll uh, do a random number generator on Monday on Monday's video. And uh, we will see who the winner is and I'll just do a random number generator. So if you want to win $100 cash, um, that's the way to do it. And before I jump into the charts, I do want to bring up, uh, this is my tr investing um, activity history. So you, I did a video yesterday. If you, if you tuned into that video, you would have saw that I bought at the end of the day, I bought um, SPXS, so short SPY uh, using the ETF. I was short QQQ using the SQQQ ETF. And I went and I bought uh, FNGD, which is the bear fang ETF. So you can see here, I bought SPXS at 593. I ended up selling at uh, this morning uh, at 594. I wasn't really sure exactly, so I didn't really make a whole, whole lot off of that one. Um, but I did buy QQQ for 2587 and then I sold it this morning for 2635. So I made decent profit there. And um, FNGD, you can see here, I sold it for 1099, uh, bought it for 1099, sold it for 11. Didn't really make much money off of that as well. But then I rebought it cheaper because I saw that it was probably going to, um, to correct a little bit. So I bought it cheaper at 1070. Uh, Nine, uh, I can see here I bought QQQ, SQQQ at 25. Um, I bought SPXS again at 587, so I was able to reload cheaper. And then you can see here that I sold them at 26, 11, 589. And I just made a bunch of quick, uh, quick flips, but I didn't have a single losing trade. Then I flipped uh, long Apple and I actually closed out all, I sold all of these, these shorts, and I went long Apple. I bought at 110, 110.85, sold at 111.28. I could have held on a little bit longer, um, but uh, I just did a quick flip there. And then I actually was gonna take a break from the computer, and I saw that Apple hadn't set a five minute higher low yet, which I'll bring up the ch uh, chart in a little bit. But uh, I was like, okay, well, we're just looking for a higher low. So I rebought at 110, looking for that higher low. I set a stop loss at 109.69, uh, which was below the low of the day at that time. And then uh, I came back from my break and I sold at 111.39. So there you go. Two trades back to back on Apple. Then I bought a uh, short, I bought some Hexo just adding to my position for Hexo. Um, again, I absolutely love these drinks. If you haven't tried the Molo or any of Hexo's drinks, give them a try. Cannabis infused beverage, they're awesome. And uh, yeah, into the end of the day, um, I bought a couple of other um, positions. Uh, a couple of people in the community followed me as well. And I know they, are, they were up big on those positions as well. But into the end of the day, I actually trimmed some of my, I actually trimmed some of my positions because of the way we close. So we'll jump into that here now. Um, we'll take a look at the charts in just a second. I wanna highlight this, uh, this article. So the Fed will be talking next week. So that's something to be mindful of. And 
it, we started to see volatility pick up in this trading session. So I wouldn't be surprised if volatil volatility continues into next week. So taking a look at SPY on the weekly, you can see here that we had, hadn't really tested the EMA 12 support, uh, but we did get close and we started to bounce. But if you look at QQQ, QQQ bounced right off of that EMA 12 support and, uh, and found uh, a nice bounce to get the hourly bounce underway. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see, if we go up into Monday, I could definitely see us going up into Monday, potentially set a daily lower high as well, or a weekly um, lower high. You can see that we changed the daily trend. So taking a look at SPY, the level to hold was 332.88. We broke that, we hit a low of 336.97. So we, sorry, it was uh, a low of 332.88 and we hit a low of 331. So we obviously broke that by quite a bit. And we were able to close, bulls were able to save it though into the end of the day, but I mean, still technically a daily downtrend. Um, if you zoom out to the weekly, you could still consider that uh, a, weekly, a weekly bull flag. Yeah, I, I would still say that a weekly bull flag is still in play. We also have EMA 12, so that'll be on the, on the lookout. Um, QQQ, a little bit more pullback than we want to see. So uh, day, a weekly bull flag on QQQ doesn't really seem that likely. So that gives us a little bit of clues on what to expect for SPY. Um, but yeah, taking a look at QQQ, you see here that the level to hold on the daily was the low of 269.66 and we hit a low of 250, sorry, 266.90. So we had to hold 269.66 and we hit 266.90. But again, bulls saved it into the end of the day uh, with that hourly bounce, the uh, oversold bounce that was underway. And we'll just look on Monday to change the hourly trend. So that's what I'm going to be watching on Monday. Um, I'll probably, I'll probably switch long if we start to form an hourly higher low, depending on how we open. But again, subscribe to the channel, check the, uh, ch click the bell. You'll be notified on my future updates and you'll be able to get a, an idea of where I, uh, where I stand going into next week. So one thing I wanted to highlight um, on SPY, um, just taking a look here, we had a one minute inverse head and shoulders down here, um, which gave me uh, another reason why I wanted to get out of my, um, why I wanted to go into Apple long. So I, I couldn't have picked a better time to enter that trade. And I know a lot of people think I have a crystal ball lately, but um, just been in my flow. And like I said, I've only had one bad trade in the last three weeks. Um, and you can see my trade history that I, uh, that I brought up earlier, but I did want to bring up DXY. So DXY had, we had an equilibrium, but we had in the, and I'm looking at the one minute chart because I was, because of the volatility and everything was picking up so rapidly. I, I just had to, I, I figured that the one minute chart was giving me the most information and, uh, Generally, I don't really look at the charts on the one minute, but you can see here we had a one minute inverse head and shoulders on DXY and we broke out and then um, we were trying to form a cup and handle, but we didn't quite get there. We had to consolidate and then we blasted off here and we formed a equilibrium. If you look at it on the five minute, um, it was a five minute EQ as well. So once you, once you could see here, once we lost um, that EQ. So we, we, we were in this range right here. We had a high, low, lower high, higher, low, lower high, broke that bearish, had massive follow through. And then you can see here, we changed the trend um, bullish. And then once we broke that uh, uptrend line there on the five minute, it was, uh, it was all downside from that point. And we could be setting a, another five minute inverse head and shoulders here, potentially. We'll have to see how the uh, futures uh, close. But um, yeah, something I wanted to highlight for you folks on DXY. And another thing that uh, they did was they started to sell SPY off today, uh, right around lunchtime. So you can see that uh, the, start, the sell off started around 1230 Eastern, uh, between 12 and 1230. And once everybody got back from lunch, that was basically when the trend reversed. You can see here that we set a low, a high, higher, low, higher, high, changed the five minute trend. 
Um, that was another reason that I felt confident going um, long Apple. And in retrospect, I was actually considering Tesla would have been a better trade. Um, if I would have went long Tesla, you can see here, um, Apple did fairly well. But if you take a look at Tesla from the low, uh, we were up, we were down to two, or sorry, 366. And I believe we were up 5%, oh, 2%. So we're up 2%. So, um, sorry, my mistake. That's the one minute chart. Yeah, so we we're closer to 4% uh, from the low of the day. And we didn't break the, we did break the low of yesterday on Tesla. That was something else that I was watching on QQQ. We broke the low of yesterday on spy. We broke the low of, the, of yesterday, but on some other uh, indexes, we didn't get as much follow through. Uh, Tesla was late to the party. It took a while for Tesla to um, lose its low of yesterday, but we didn't see any follow through. And if you would have played off of that support, you would have made a quick three, 4%. So uh, in ret retrospect, I would have done things a little differently looking at that, but um, I know Tesla has been a little bipolar lately, so I, tr I, I tend to um, stick with, uh, with Apple um, just because it's something I'm more comfortable trading. And you can see here in SPY after hours, we're starting to trend down as well. Um, so taking a look, I wanna highlight on Apple really quickly. We have daily support. We had daily support at 109. So you can see here back here at uh, 109.11. We held that. We hit a low of exactly 110. So nice round psychological number. Um, usually every $5 is a, is a nice psychological number, especially when you're over around the $100 mark on a stock. So we have that support. So we held that. If we would have lost that, I would have shorted QQQ. And it would have been not even a question and I wouldn't even had a second thought in my mind because we had this gap to fill. Wouldn't be surprised on Monday if we do fill that gap. Um, it could possibly happen. It might, we might ramp up uh, into Monday, Tuesday. Maybe it won't happen right away, but we do have a couple of gaps in the chart down at 96.30 and no daily support um, after 109 until all the way down here at 89.15. So we could easily, easily fall 14 to 20% on Apple. And again, given the fact that it's run hundreds of percent since the March lows, it's not exactly crazy to think that that could potentially happen. So taking a look at QQQ, I do wanna show uh, a pattern that I was watching as well uh, toward the end of the day. It was on the five minute chart. So you could see here that we, we, we basically topped out right here around the 270 level. We, we topped, we double topped, we pulled back, triple topped actually, basically. And that's, I shorted that, I covered my shorts. So you saw that I had a couple of flips throughout the day. And then I covered my, uh, I re-shorted up here. And then at the end of the day, I sold some of my positions, um, holding about half cash, half short. And um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I thought they were going to sell it off into the end of the day um, a bit more than they did. Um, so we'll have to see how things play out on Monday, but just something that uh, one observation that I had there on QQQ and you can see we broke out and that 270 level was still acting as, as resistance there from the, uh, from the triple top. And we had increasing, um, bear volume on SPY to end the day. So taking a look at SPY. See here we had increasing bear volume and then we changed the five minute trend. We had increasing bear volume again. We lost that five minute uptrend. That's another reason why I was comfortable shorting. And then when, we, when I saw this increasing bull volume, I covered that short and I looked to reshort into the end of the day. I expected a sell-off into the end of the day, but a little bit more extreme. Like I said, I, I, I thought they were going to definitely take advantage of fear, especially since the daily trend changed. It, was, uh, it wasn't exactly what I expected, 100%, but um, definitely didn't take me by surprise by any means. Um, so taking a look at the SPY weekly candle, 
So you can see here, we're a little bit of an indecision, leaning a little bit toward bearish. We still have EMA 12 support, which I mentioned earlier. So the weekly, weekly volume wasn't uh, as high as last week. And you gotta keep in mind that it's September, so people are starting to uh, get back into the swing of things. Everybody's coming off vacation, that type of thing. So we should see volume start to ramp up here. And usually volume precedes price. So just keep that in mind for future reference. We're still, uh, still haven't broken the low of the last monthly candle. And taking a look at the close on the daily, you can see here we have a little bit of a bullish reversal candle here on the daily. Um, taking a look at QQQ, QQQ on the monthly, almost lost the low of last month. So we could potentially see some monthly consolidation here next week. Next week's gonna be very important as well. But like I said, we held that support um, pretty much to the, to the penny and wouldn't be surprised if we saw a mini bounce into next week. Again, volume dropped off a little bit, a um, little bit leaning uh, bearish on the, on the candle, uh, the type of candle there. And again, a little bit of a bullish reversal candle um, going into the end of the day. So that's where we are with the daily and weekly closes on SPY and QQQ. Taking a look at the stock chart, I wanna bring up the weekly chart for what, I think I highlighted this on uh, yesterday's video. So you can see here, I, I said I was looking for three things. I was looking for the stochastic, she continued to trend down. I was looking for the MACD to cross bearish, which it didn't do. And I was looking for the price to cross down through the 10 week period moving average. So we, we didn't break that. We didn't close below. So that didn't happen. That was one uh, thing that I was looking to happen in order to be fully confident to go bearish into the weekend. And the MACD didn't cross. So we only had one of the three check marks, uh, check boxes. So I wasn't comfortable going you know, guns blazing short into the into the weekend because I think that there could potentially be some more upside. And um, taking a look at the, you can see here that was another reason why I was I was looking to cover my spy my spy short with uh, SPXS and go long Apple because I knew that we had the 50 day moving average right here at 331. And what was the low of the day? Low of the day was. 331. So we bounced perfectly off the 50 day moving average. It couldn't have worked out any better. So again, there's, there was multiple reasons. The dollar, VIX was down 10% today. Um, there was so many different reasons. The 50 day moving average. I, I just, I, 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 I've been so confident lately that um, I, I just go with my gut feeling and I don't really second guess it. I'm just in a flow and until that flow decides to leave, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. So taking a look at QQQ on the weekly, QQQ, different story. Starting to cross on the MACD, crossed on the stochastic, and we closed below the 10 week moving average. So again, this could be a potential sign for what we could expect for, for SPY. Maybe SPY will do the same, maybe not. Maybe SPY will, will hold these, uh, these bulls up, uh, tech bulls, and pull them up higher, we'll see. Maybe we see some rotation into some other names and then back into tech, we'll have to wait until Monday. But again, check in with me on Monday. We'll do that $100 giveaway and we'll also give you guys an update on what I expect into the start of next week. So like I said, check box number one, check number two. Didn't quite cross as much as I would like here on the MACD, but definitely, definitely comfortable going bearish on SQQQ. I have a position into the weekend, a fairly large position. Now taking a look at QQQ on the daily, you can see here that we did dip below the 50 day moving average, uh, but we closed right around it. So it was 271.38 and that was acting as resistance. If we go back here uh, toward the end of the day, 271, what did I say that was? 271.38. 271.44, we poke just above, and then we pull back. So we get another reason why I, when I saw that upper wick, I was comfortable shorting into the end of the day because I knew that that 50-day moving average was gonna potentially act as resistance. And guys, if you have any questions, if there's anything that isn't making sense, if there's anything that you want clarified or any tickers you want some analysis on, just post them in the comments below. 
I'll do my best to get to them, my priorities with the community and the members. So if you go to powgroup.ca or pursuitofwealthgroup.com, uh, um, then you can sign up for a free trial, it's a seven day free trial, or you can sign up for $4.99 a month. And we do private videos for members. Some communities will charge you 100 to 200 to $300 a month for $5, how could you go wrong? Check it out, we even offer a seven day free trial. So one thing I wanted to mention, um, actually not super important, but uh, one thing I wanted to mention on Apple is that we had a one minute inverse head and shoulders. Again, I don't generally look at the one minute chart, but that was, uh, that was clear. We had that one minute inverse head and shoulders and the bulls were off to the races after that. And um, we obviously broke down from that uptrend and volatility. So again, I highlighted this multiple times. It took us 22 bars to get up to that high and seven, six to get down to exactly where we were. So again, slow grind up, flushing down, red flag. We're also starting to see a lot of mergers and acquisitions. I saw a stat that usually when mergers and acquisitions start to pick up and we start to see a lot of activity in mergers and acquisitions, it's usually bad for the stock market. And you can just go to Google, take a look. There was a, an article on uh, Market Watch, I think it was, and I don't have it right here, but they basically alluded to the fact that there's a lot of uh, M&A activity and we could be coming to the end of that cycle. And generally, I think it's 100% accuracy that every time there, we reach a peak in M&A activity, we start to see equities um, being pulled down as a, as a result of that. And it makes sense because a lot of uncertainty companies are, are, are not really strong. They're looking to, we, we saw that Nikola and GM partnered. So, and then we saw that short report on Nikola, which was absolutely crazy. Um, so you, you have to be ready for all, all angles. And uh, on, on SPY and QQQ, we were just looking for hourly lower highs, um, which was the case. And I used EMA 12 as my visual guide. You can see here that we were rejecting from that resistance, um, same with SPY. So we poked above, but we closed below the EMA 12's uh, resistance on that. So we were just looking for hourly lower highs on SPY and QQQ to end the day. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Again, check back in on Monday, subscribe to the channel if you like this perspective and tick the little bell, you'll be notified on the next update. You won't wanna miss the next one. We'll do a hundred dollar giveaway to the lucky winner on that. And uh, yeah, just like the video, smash the, smash the like. I'd appreciate that very much. Had an awesome week. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and super, Super thankful for everything that, uh, that's been happening in the last couple of weeks. I know a lot of people are in turmoil and there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in the world. So I just wanted to, uh, to, pass, and I wanted to pass on some, some gratitude and token of appreciation for the members and, and all the good things going in my life and paying it forward. So congratulations to the lucky winner on Monday. Have, a, have yourself a great rest of your day and a fantastic weekend and we'll check to you check in with you on monday for the next daily market recap take care everyone